Hi, welcome to Mid-Century Scotland, Nick here. Uh, thanks for all the love on the Tiki Bar Tour video. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I wanted to talk to you a bit about how I built the Tiki Bar. Um, I don't have any video footage of this, but I can talk you through it and I've got lots of stills uh, during the build so you can see how it came together. Uh, we bought the house back in 2012 with this amazing garden um, and once we'd finished doing the sort of essential jobs in the house that we wanted to do to get things going we turned our attention to how we were going to use the garden and we wanted to build something in the middle of the garden that would get us up to this part of the garden and start to enjoy it and take it all in enjoy the peace and quiet and what better way to do that than to build a bar to come and escape um, so I'd already been kind of on the periphery of tiki culture beforehand um, through hot rodding and custom cars. I uh, got to know a few tiki people like uh, Hot Rod Tiki Vintage, Sue and Dave. Um, been to a few bars like Trader Vic's um, in London um, and seen a few different things. So I was kind of aware of that. I'd also done the photography for the book Tiki Mugs uh, by Carrera Publishing, uh, which Jay Shrumman wrote. Um, so I'd spent a couple of days um, shooting mugs just for that book. So alongside some other photographers, um, you'll, you'll maybe have seen that book. It's a really great guide to, to what's out there in the world of tiki mugs or what was out there when it was made, certainly. Um, so I'd been around tiki, I knew about tiki um, and the ethos of that of being able to escape from the modern world, come to a little piece of paradise in the garden and just relax really appealed. So I started to think about how to design the bar. Um, obviously you had to comply with any planning restrictions as well about the height of it and all that type of thing. So, so bore that in mind. And I wanted to make it with as many salvaged and reclaimed things as I could from a cost point of view, from an environmental point of view, but also to give it character and a bit of life. Because um, when you're using upcycled things, it brings that something to the party. Um, so I thought about what to do. I had a shed that came with the house that the bottom had completely rotted out. Um, most people would have thought it was fit for burning or taking to the dump, but I thought I could bring some new life into that. So I planned to build that as a cabin and then wanted to have a deck out from there. Um, and as I started to draw that, I just had the idea of let's make a ship. Let's make a boat in the middle of the garden. Um, it sounds ridiculous. Obviously it ties into Tiki and exploring Polynesia by boat, obviously the Con Tiki with Thor and his adventures. Um, so it all fitted in with that. So it seemed like a great idea. Let's, let's, let's make a boat. We can have a seating area in the front. I can use it as a bar in the nighttime with my wife and my friends. And we had a four year old son at the time. This is in 2014. And he could use it as a pirate ship during the day and play on with it, his friends. So him to play on it as a pirate in the day, me to drink like a pirate at night. Winning combination. Um, so with the design done in SketchUp for how the boat was gonna look, um, I set about clearing the site where it was gonna go. Um, so I think I had to take down a tree or two. I had to clear some big poles of wood um, and various compost heaps and things that were in this site. So I cleared all of that ready to go and then started to build a perimeter frame. Um, so just posts into the ground, post greeted in, um, down the sides and some in the middle as well uh, to support the joists to make it nice and solid. Um, so I built that perimeter frame, I think out of two by sixes, uh, put joists across all the way down and built the bow in a triangular shape to fit, it, fit alongside that. Uh, once that was done, I could start to lay the deck, which is made from scaffold boards that I sourced from Glasgow. Um, so we've got scaffold board decking. Uh, while I was building the frame, I also built a frame for the cabin. So where I was bringing this old shed with rotten pieces, I wanted the walls and I wanted the roof. So I built a much stronger frame to support it and then just fixed all the sides of the shed and the roof to that frame. Um, it was quite heavy to bring up. So luckily my car club at the time, the Phantoms, uh, came round for our monthly meeting and we held it here. And then after the meet, everyone helped me to bring all the bits of the shed up. I think it took about eight of us to carry the roof because it was packed with layers and layers of felt. Um, so that went on here, all the walls hung on the, on the frame. Uh, because there'd been some rot around the bottom, there was only enough for three sides in the roof. Um, and I knew in my design I wanted to have one side of the shed open in the front, open right up. Um, so I was able to use the bits from that side to fix the other bits that were missing. 
So I put that together, started to build that door that opens out um, 90 degrees from the front. So I just built a frame for that, plywood on one side, feather edge on the other, and then wallpapered on the beach scene that you'll have seen on there. Um, so that's fixed to there. I did plan to varnish that. Occasionally I have to retouch up the wallpaper paste. One day I might actually get around to varnishing it so it's completely weather tight. Um, so that was done. Um, I built the seating area at the front. I used a barrel to sit around. Uh, what better to have on a pirate ship than the barrel of the run? It was actually a whiskey barrel, but never mind. Um, so you sit around the whiskey barrel and then flanking that at the front on either side um, are tiki's that were built by um, Trader Tark down in Peacehaven. I absolutely love those tiki's. I've had them for six, seven years now and they just look absolutely awesome. They're weathered in nicely, um, but the, the detail is just fantastic and they really fit the style that I wanted for the bar. So thanks Tark for those. Fantastic. So the seating area is in, the railings around the side, um, much of the rope that's hanging off there, we actually beach combed from various holidays around Scotland. Um, so there's bits of fishing net and fishing wires and ropes that all came off the beach. Um, we've got some thicker rope on there to help support the railings as well. That's not from the beach, but a lot of it's beach combed and scrapped and it comes with the memories of the trips and everything else as well. So that's fantastic. Again, adding character where you can. So with all that done, it was time to kit out the inside of the bar. Um, and as luck would have it, one of my neighbors decided they were gonna replace their internal doors. Um, so their house was built at the same time as ours in 1973. Uh, and you've got these fake teak doors that are actually got a cardboard sandwich in the middle. Um, so they're not exactly robust, but they've done an awesome job of wood paneling out the bar. So I was very grateful to get those, thanks to Dave and Helen. Um, so they've gone in the bar, they, they started it off nicely in here. Then I could just start to layer up the paraphernalia. Um, built shelves out of scaffold boards for mugs and rum. Um, I've got a vintage sideboard here, uh, which my friend Russ Hasty pinstriped. Russ is the guy who painted our kitchen units that everyone loves. Um, so great to have Russ involved in this. We've got various other people's pinstripe in here like Seaside Neil. Um, of course I've got something from Atomic Tiki for a, a cooler. Um, so different pinstripers and artists have contributed. Uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon painting was done by my friend Simon Nefarious. So he found this um, motel style painting that was done in 1954 by a guy called Arnold James, um, looked at the year that it was painted, realized that's when the creature from the Black Lagoon came out. So that's what he added and overpainted onto that scene, which is awesome. Um, sadly, Simon passed away a few years ago. So it's brilliant to have that reminder of his amazing art and what a nice guy he was. Um, so it's really nice to have that piece in there. Um, so just layering all that stuff up, the actual bar itself was completely made from scraps that were left over. So bits of the doors, bits of posts, any old scrap wood I could get for the front. Um, so again, it adds character, it adds to that. If we were really washed up in the middle of nowhere in Polynesia, we just have to build with whatever we had available. So that's why everything, all these different bits of scrap and everything have gone some form part of it. So I think that's basically the build. Um, it took quite a long time because it was very stop and start. I was just doing it on weekends and evenings. Um, and we've used it a fair bit since it was built. It plays a key role in our annual big party that we normally have outside of COVID times in the garden. Um, and I love when people discover it, you know, and they first come to the garden and you walk up through the woods, through the bushes, and all of a sudden you find a boat. Um, and then there's another surprise, not only is there a boat, but it's actually got a bar in it as well. Um, so it's, it's great fun, a great bit of theater, a great bit of escapism. Um, and a lovely place to socialise. So I'm really glad that I built it um, and it's, it's brought us a lot of fun. And it brought my son a lot of fun playing on the boat part as well when he was younger. Um, I'm sure when he gets older, he'll be discovering this part of the bar um, and then we'll probably have a different problem on our hands, but never mind. So there we go. Thanks for taking time with me uh, to talk about the build of the Contiki. Um, like I say, if you haven't watched the bar tour, go ahead and watch that video. Thanks to all of you who've subscribed to this channel so far. We're still young and growing, uh, but I'm hoping to get a lot more content up during the year. Um, so please like and subscribe. Thanks very much.